Oftentimes, horror movies made for kids and teens or families that want to watch family-friendly horror films either don't get made at all or the ones that are out there don't get talked about by the horror community nearly enough. I think these movies and shows deserve some spotlight time too. That's why I'm doing this review of The Haunting Hour. Don't think about it. Starting now. Welcome to Sleep Kills, the channel for horror fans and future horror fans. Today I'm going to be reviewing R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour, Don't Think About It. Yes, the same R.L. Stein that wrote all of those amazing Goosebumps books. Myself and probably many of you horror fans out there grew up reading and up over and over again, sometimes while in detention. But Mr. Stein didn't stop there, did he? Thankfully, no, he didn't. He also put his name stamp of approval on the Goosebumps television series where most, but not all, of the episodes were based on those same books that he wrote. I enjoyed both on a regular basis and still have many of those classic Goosebumps books just in case I get that itch that needs to be scratched from time to time. However, this is a review of Don't Think About It, so let's get started, shall we? Don't Think About It was written by Dan Angel and Billy Brown. It was directed by Alex Zam and stars Emily Osment, Cody Lindley, Brittany Curran, and Tobin Bell. That's right, horror fans. The Tobin Bell from the Saw movies is in this. I, for one, think that gives this movie some horror street cred. With that being said, though, I'm sure those that are new to this genre will likely still recognize Emily Osment from the Hannah Montana TV series and movie. Don't Think About It is about cute bookworm goth girl Cassie, played by Emily Osment, that loves reading and everything macabre. That also includes getting gross prank revenge on a mean girl from school and scaring her too easily frightened little brother Max, played by Alex Winsenred or Winsen Reed. The mean girl Priscilla, played by Brittany Curran, only cares about being a bully to the new kid Cassie, being popular slash being the pumpkin queen and getting the guy Cassie has a crush on to be her boyfriend. Getting that guy, Sean, played by Cody Lindley, works, but also turns bad because of an accident that embarrasses Cassie big time. Cassie goes home after school feeling humiliated, frustrated, and sad because she's new in this town and school and things aren't going well so far. Her parents are doing their best, but are, well, parents. They mean well, though. And her little brother, Max, does just enough to annoy her and get under her skin. So she decides to get some revenge on Priscilla, thinking it'll be a ton of fun, grossing out, and scaring her half to death in front of their schoolmates at the Halloween dance. Someone has their eyes on Cassie, though, and now things are going to get really interesting. At home... Cassie's parents say they have a Halloween work party they have to go to, so Cassie will have to take her little brother out trick-or-treating and babysit him until they get back home. Cassie definitely isn't happy about this, because as she says, and I agree, Halloween is the best night of the year. She then takes a walk into town and in a dark alleyway notices a Halloween shop door and goes in to check it out. She meets the mysterious shop owner played by Jigsaw, I mean Tobin Bell. This shop is all horror lover's dream, by the way, and Cassie's smile as she enters in backs me up on that. The shop owner insists on selling her a book titled The Evil Thing. For us hardcore horror fans, it may remind you like it did me of the Necronomicon, aka the Book of the Dead from The Evil Dead. But even non-horror fans have probably watched Hocus Pocus at least once, so it'll likely remind you all of the spell book with the eye. The evil thing is its own thing, however, and serves a different purpose. Cassie opens the front cover, and on the first page it warns not to read the book aloud and don't think about it. Of course, Cassie doesn't take the warning all that seriously. So after taking her brother trick-or-treating, 
and him getting on her last nerve, she reads Max the book anyway, and naturally he does think about it. Priscilla hasn't forgot about the prank Cassie pulled on her for revenge, so she schemes to get some revenge of her own by blackmailing Sean into helping her scare the crap out of Cassie and filming it to show it to everyone at school. But because Cassie read the book out loud, and Max did indeed think about it, the monster from the Evil Thing book comes to life and abducts Max and Priscilla and another as well. Sean sees that this is what happened and lets Cassie know, and then the two of them have to figure out how to defeat the monster, save Max, and yes, even the mean girl Priscilla. This movie has great Halloween atmosphere for children and children at heart of all ages. The music is really good and catchy, like the song Tell Me by Failed Flight, which is my favorite from this movie. We get to enjoy that awesomeness while Cassie is laying on her bed feeling down and angry. Also worth mentioning, Emily Osment provides the song Don't Think About It for the soundtrack too. While that song isn't really my cup of tea, I thought I should at least bring it up. The story in this movie is pretty good and interesting. Is the monster just Cassie and Max's imagination? Or is it real? The same question could be asked about the shop owner and the evil thing book itself. Ultimately, I think this movie is about being true to who you are, no matter what happens to you or what anyone else thinks. You're you for a reason. So, if you're what society would call weird, stay weird. The performances in this were all well acted. Great job by all. But the standout performances, I would say, are from Brittany Curran's mean girl character Priscilla, whose snobbiness and cruelty really tick you off. The next performance I would say that really stood out to me was that of the mysterious shop owner, played perfectly by the legendary Tobin Bell. He really freaks you out and gives you the runaway, fast kind of vibes. So my final thoughts on this movie is that it's a great, scary, fun, family-friendly horror movie that kids slash teens and their parents, guilt-free, can enjoy together anytime, but especially every Halloween night. If you're a hardcore horror addict like myself though, I think you too can and should also enjoy this one for a nice, simple, scary movie with lots of homages to some of our favorite horror films. Monster will remind you a lot of Alien and the Aliens from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Clearly, the writers, director, and special effects team who worked on this movie must be horror fans to some degree. So turn your critical lens off temporarily and just enjoy this fun, innocent little horror movie. Until next time, Sleep kills, and no matter what, never fall asleep, our fans. See you in the next video.